Welcome to another episode here at LightingBot. We are continuing the URP tutorial, learning a little bit more about lighting and how much other disciplines pay into the concept of being a good lighting artist, basically. Uh, however, it takes a lot of time to make these videos uh, on the level that I wanted to. So they will be going over into paid tutorials and paid mentorship. So from now on onwards, I will just fine touch the key ideas uh, that should be enough to get you started and make you aware of things. Eventually, these tutorials will be uh, locked away um, as well. So make use of it while it's available. So on our last video, we ended up on three point lighting. You were kind of understanding the different ways of doing lighting. And basically what I've done, I've created a you know, different setup to explain the next topic, which is the color part of the lighting, is understanding how color um, conveys mood and also how color can ruin your image if you don't understand what you're doing. So this is a three point lighting we had and I upgraded it slightly to my mood lighting, which is this. So essentially what I've done is I have uh, kept the key light, I've uh, kept the backlight, I've added uh, a stronger rim light, and I've added a fill light, uh, I kept the fill light. So the main difference is I added the rim light, uh, which I didn't do in my previous last three point lighting. Another thing you'll notice is I went for what I call um, split monochrome lighting, which is basically me picking a key light and backlight to be more or less the same, but I'm keeping it the same value, different value, but the same color. So they are within the same color, but they have different values and tone to them. The same goes for this one, they are within the same color, but they have different values added to the color itself. The saturation is different. Of course, the intensity as well is different. So what is this important? This is important because if you pick the wrong color and they all happen to be the same and the surface ha tends to be the same, what you end up with is no difference in value and your image will look flat. So what does this mean? Well, these are all different colors, but even though they're different colors, they all have the same saturation, aka value. So unless you tweak those values, when it comes to great lighting and mood, you end up with nothing. That's good. You just end up with a flat picture. And that's why often when you go places and ask for quick feedback, they'll just keep quickly tell you it's flat. But this is one of many reasons why it is flat. So basically that means that if I were to add this image, you can see this is monochrome. But it's using the colors very intelligently, right? So what's happening here, it's using a little bit of this color over here and a different value in terms of this uh, beige, orange. Then it goes a bit darker brown and even darker brown, you know, and then mid brown. And it's all to create the depth and form and shape. Now, if I do the saturation off, you'll see, you can still see the painting. It's clear as day. You can see all the shape, all the form, and you can also see the colors, right? You can see all the values that's been used in the image. And that's basically what that means. So in the context of what we are doing, that means that if you play with the values like we have been doing, and I took some images ahead of time to save and make this uh, quite short, you'll see that if you change the color of things to be identical, you lose the shape and form. The reason this rim light is strong is because of the angle intensity. So let's try that. Let's try that very quickly and get an idea of, of what it means. So essentially what it means is, which is the key thing here, right? Is if I keep everything basically the same, 
So I undo what we did. And I keep everything exactly the same, which is why the mood lighting is obviously better as well. What happens is it might look like the lighting is like, oh, it looks interesting, it looks good. But it hasn't really reached its full potential because of the fact that you're picking colors that are too close to each other in saturation and value, even though you might be playing with intensity. The image itself has not reached its full potential, right? It will still be somewhat flat. Right? So, see? It's not really the same, even even in this context. And there we kept the values the same and everything. You can see it's, it's still flat. It is, it's not really as good. Here you have a little bit here. Here you have a little bit on the rim side on the left. Here you have a, a quite a good highlight and it goes into the shape. And then you have the rim like kind of making sure you understand that's the back. And you have some light on the bottom as well. Not necessarily perfect, there's always room for improvement. You can look at top of the head as well. This is dark, there's some light there. Dark, dark, dark. So there's different pros and cons. And there's definitely more things you could work with. But it's also the fact that if you light the whole face using the color and intensity, you still, that's why you end up with a flat image, right? Because that's what exactly you're doing. You're trying to fill in everything and you're losing the form and the contrast. Okay. Now, there's another thing you have to keep in mind, which is color mixing. Color mixing is basically when you mix two colors, such as a red and a blue, you get another color, which is purple. And that's, again, as I might have mentioned before in in other videos is because we use additive color when we use lighting so blue and red gives you uh, purple now you might say oh that's not a problem i'm gonna go with uh, green well you're not gonna get exactly green either because when you mix red and green you tend to get another color i think it's yellow and if you go towards the orange you know you sh uh, and the red you know again it's, it's one color and you lose all the shape if you do that so these are the simple things uh, well it's not simple but I'm making it simple in this video anyway um, that you need to keep in mind when you're doing these kind of things the third thing I call is, is uh, something I just call color conflict and that's essentially is when you have a color which is fully saturated and you are putting the light on a character and what that does is you lose again all shape and all form because of the color so an example would be if we go back to the color mixing is here If I go back to blue, you can see this is supposed to be like light red orange. This is supposed to be blue. And if I do white on one of them, you'll eventually see that I'm starting to see the true shape or the colors of the of the form of the character. And this is essentially what I'm doing here. And this is just one light. Is if you're gonna use some colors, especially if it's the same color or similar range that's on the material, which is red and blue, don't do this. All right. All this does is 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 eliminate everything. You know, it looks like you didn't light the picture at all. It's just black and flat. But what you can do is you can keep it, you know, around the mid range. And you'll get the color and you'll see that certain colors that bring out the shape and other colors they don't. So in this context, that's why in the beginning of the tutorial, we went with a bit of a light orange or, or um, a teal because it matches within the range of the material, but we keep it desaturated. So it's closer to the white, but it's still a color, right? There's a, there's a big difference between actual white and the teal. There's a big difference between 
um, light orange and actual white to see the true color of the materials so these are the things I want you to think about when you do your lighting is is what color did I pick is it too saturated is it saturated look at the paintings you know understand the paintings and uh, analyze it if you need to and just see what they are doing differently and that's essentially what you also want to do so again uh, if you want to learn more about this and, and more thoroughly uh, from now on uh, you can leave a comment and ask for a mentorship and you'll get the proper training you need to really understand this uh, hopefully this video is short and concise and it gives you an idea of how to deal with color when you're doing your lighting uh, be it unreal or unity in this case uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day <laughs>